Hello, friends. In today's episode, I'm going to continue talking about innovation. And one of the things that is essential for innovation is creativity. So we are going to talk today about creativity and how one can become creative. Uh, I do have a presentation today. So let me start by sharing my screen. Okay, so we're going to talk today about being creative. Creativity does not always come naturally to people. Some people, a lot of people in fact, are inherently creative. Anytime they open their mouth, anytime they express your thoughts, you can see a difference in the way of thinking and perception compared to others. But it's not natural and it does not come to everybody. But creative, in spite of his rarity, is a crucial factor for success. You cannot achieve success unless you have creative people and creative thought processes within your organization. And creative is a very, very vital human resource. There is, there is, well, people say AI will do it, but I really doubt. AI exists because some human beings were creative. So creative is a very important human resource. And it is very difficult. In fact, I would say there is no progress you can make if you don't have creativity within an organization and within yourself. So if you keep doing, and this is something Einstein has said, and we've all heard it, I think, umpteen number of times. But if you keep doing what you always do, you will get the same results that you have always got. There will be no change. You will not achieve anything different. You will not achieve anything new. So just repeating and continuing doing what you are doing is not the way to make progress. In fact, and I think something to this effect has been said by no less than Steve Jobs, is that creativity helps you to create a better tomorrow. And not worry, not dwell on the past. If you are creative, you are constantly looking forward to some improvement. So you don't dwell on the past, you definitely learn from the past. Okay, so creativity helps you to create a better tomorrow and not worry about yesterday. Frequently, I'm asked this question whenever I talk of innovation or when I start or rather started consulting for a couple of companies on just making their teams more innovative and creating innovative products and solutions to some of their challenges. And the question is, how do I create or assemble a creative team? If creative people who are naturally creative are so hard to find, and there are so few of them, how do I create a team that is constantly creative and will help me and my business to succeed more easily? So my answer to them, has always been, and I still believe, that while looking for creative talent and getting them on your team is great, and you shouldn't stop doing it, but there are ways in which you can help your existing team to become creative. And with at least four of the organizations, of the six organizations that I'm consulting on just innovation, we have been very successful in doing this. We have noticed that their existing team has become so creative that at the start of the project, we never thought that something like this, some change of this kind would be possible. Let me be very clear. It is not possible to teach creativity. Okay, creativity is not something that is taught. But you can create an environment within the organization where the teams can get to be more creative. And there's some simple 
steps you can follow. There are some not so simple steps you can follow. And trust me, the not so simple steps always deliver better results. But there are ways where you can make changes, where you can affect systems in your own organization by which your team will become more creative. And these systems that you set up, these steps that you take to set up will make your team think outside the box. And by doing so, they will come out with new and exciting ways of doing things. And that will make creativity happen. It's all about the new, it's all about exciting things that happen. And just make creativity a buzzword in your organization. When anybody thinks, he should always think of how he can do that job and even other jobs that he knows are happening within the organization and give it a creative twist to make them better, more effective. So what we are going to do today is we are going to look at various steps and actions that you as an organization, as well as you as an individual can take to encourage team members and to make yourself more creative. Because at the end of the day, as I said, if they are not creative, success is limited. And fundamentally, there are a few steps that you can take. Clarity. If there is clarity about the project, about the problem, there will be creative solutions that will come. Ideate. Ideate before create. Develop ideas and solutions to address the challenge or the problem that you are facing. And then at the end of the day, you have to get down to implementing those ideas. While this is not going to make everybody super creative, it is going to make the organization and each team more effective in giving you creative solutions. So what are the, what are the things that we are talking? When we talk of clarity to start with, identify very clearly the challenge and the problem that you have. This itself is a big step towards finding a solution. Ask the right questions to understand the problem. The problem is identified, but if you don't understand the problem properly, how are you going to give the right solutions? So you need to be able to ask the right questions so that you understand the problem absolutely properly, and then you can look for this. And determine the right scenario under which this challenge or problem can be sorted out. It's, it's, it's very necessary to make sure that there is a right framework within which you start working so that this challenge, you will be able to find solutions that work. Ideate. Basically, ideate is another word, fancier word, shall we say, for brainstorming. What you need to do is to brainstorm with your team on how that challenge can be addressed. But, and I will say this more than once in today's episode, you have to brainstorm within yourself also. And keep throwing out new ideas. Throw out the idea. Whether it will work or not is the second stage. First, throw out the idea. Let there be multiple ideas that come to the table and then you sit and develop those ideas and solutions. Because once you have those ideas, only then can you think of how you will use those ideas to solve your challenges. Map out all possible ideas. As I said, you have multiple ideas and some of them will not work from day one. And in fact, when the idea is tabled also, there may be a few people in the team or there may be yourself when you're talking and brainstorming with yourself that you will feel that, oh, but this is not going to work. But all the same, note it down. And why do you note it down? Because you may not remember all the ideas that come to mind. As someone has said, a short pencil is far better than a long memory. So note down everything. Note down the ideas and then start mapping them out. 
And once you start the process of mapping them out, you will realize that some of the ideas cannot work at all. And if you do reach a situation where, well, all the ideas that you have listed down don't seem to be ones that work, it's okay. Let them all fail. You start over again. You don't fail. Start over again. What's the harm? What is, what is lost? By within those failed ideas, you have learned something. As I told you repeatedly in other episodes, every failure is an opportunity to learn. So when you have started mapping and you realize these ideas fail, there are things you have learned. So the next time you come up with ideas, they are going to address those failures and therefore you'll come up with better ideas. Just start all over again. And then at the end of the day, implement the ideas. How the first thing you will need to do to implement the idea is to buy get a buy-in from your team and the board members because they are the ones who are going to give you the leeway to do it in everything, right, from time to money. So get a buy-in from your team and the board of directors and then start executing the solution which you have mapped so that you are able to clear and address those problems and challenges that you've been working on. So now, we're talking about all this as a team predominantly or as an organization. But as an individual, if you want to be more creative, I'm going to just point out, give you some tips that you as an individual can use to become more creative. Please remember, let me be very clear from the start, that these tips are not in an order of importance or preference. They are random tips that have been coming to my mind over the past maybe 10, 12, two weeks, say, when I've been thinking about this episode. So these are tips for individuals as well as organizations. Many of them will apply to organizations also. And they are not, I repeat, they are not in an order of importance or preference. So look at each tip as an individual point and then you decide for yourself or your organization whether that is going to be helpful and whether that will happen, uh, will be useful for making your organization or you more creative. One thing you have to remember, and that's the first tip, is that you have the power to increase your creative skills. Don't learn it, but you can increase your creative skills way beyond what you imagine is possible for yourself or your organization. So by following some of these tips, trust me, you will become more creative. The first tip is break your routine. As Einstein said, if you do the same thing over and over again, you are going to get the same results. So if you break your routine and start doing different things, you can expect different results. So break your routine is my first tip. Brainstorm consistently. Always think and keep thinking and pondering on how you can do existing things, things that are there as a routine in a different way, in a new way, so that you get better and newer results. So be brainstorm consistently with your team, with your friends, as I said, I'm going to keep repeating it with yourself. So this constant brainstorming means that you are constantly coming up or ideas are being thrown at you, either by your friends or by your teams or jointly of new ways to address old problems. Stop overthinking. A lot of times when a solution is, an idea is thrown to you, you think of it not being good enough because you want a perfect solution. Don't overthink. You have a solution which you think can work. Start and make changes in the processes and actions that you take. Don't aim for perfection. Okay, if you aim for perfection, you'll probably spend the rest of your life doing nothing. 
don't aim for perfection, but just do it. Whatever that idea tells you to do it, even if it's not the best. You can then keep improving the idea for it to get better and better. But when you are improving the idea also, don't aim for perfection. It's not going to get, you're not going to get there. Okay, but if you get there 70%, 80%, 90%, if you keep improving, and that delta improvement at times will reach a stage where it is so small. Okay, like if you're 90% there, how much improvement can you make? Are you going to make that 10% jump all of a sudden? No. So you're going to make an improvement of 10% of whatever improvement. So it'll start with nine and you'll go down to eight and you'll go down to seven. And therefore you will make those delta improvements. But those delta improvements will make the idea and the solution better day by day. So continuing with some tips, let your mind run. I'm telling you, this is very important. Think, imagine, daydream, let your mind just wander. Keeping that problem in mind, keeping this problem and looking for a solution. Focus on the challenges and the ideas for the solution. Reduce detract, distractions. Focus. When you have a challenge, focus on the challenge and focus on the ideas that are coming to mind, either on your own or from your teams, for solutions that will address that challenge. And reduce distractions. Don't get distracted. Increase your capacity for selective attention. It's basically another way of saying focus, focus, focus. In more than one thing, we've talked of focus. Also, all work makes Jack a dull boy. So unwind. Enjoy cultural activities. Enjoy networking. Just go out for an evening out with your friends. Just go for a movie, just go for a play, go for a musical program, just go for a walk in the countryside. Whatever is going to distract you from that because you need to recharge, you need to rejuvenate your mind so that you can start working on the solutions and getting more ideas. And be original. While you look at solutions that are already existing, no other person's story can be your own. Okay, because that person has unique traits like you do. Each person, each and every human being has unique traits. So if something has worked for him, it need not work for you. And it need not work for your organization because just like a human being, every organization also has unique traits. So be original. Don't, don't think that you can copy the other person and get away with it and be more successful. No, you will always be the second runner. You will not be more successful because the other person's story cannot be wrong. And forget about the onlookers. When you are working on a solution, forget about the naysayers, forget about the onlookers. Just dance away as though no one is watching. Why do I say dance? Because all these creativity projects that you take up have to be fun and you have to dance your way through them. Okay, so forget the onlookers and dance away as though no one is watching. Be oblivious to all of them. Just focus on what you are doing. Focus on the solution or the idea that you have and try to make the most of it. Some more tips, take risks. If you are ever wanting to work in a situation where there is zero chance of failure, I will be audacious enough to say that if you're working with zero chance of failure, you have zero chance of success. No risk, no gain. No pain, no gain. No risk, no gain. So don't worry about failure, take risks. At some times you will feel that, oh, this is too risky and it might not work at all. Still give it a try. Maybe once you start trying, you'll figure out the challenges that come in between and there will be a chance of success. Always associate yourself with people who are not afraid of failure. 
who are willing to work with new untested ideas. What happens by associating yourself with them? You learn. You will learn how to address untested ideas, how to find solutions to them. And this kind of people will motivate you to also go through the same process. And this is a very important aspect of being creative, that you be able to test new ideas, work with new ideas, and find new and unique solutions. Be a rule breaker. Whether it is thinking, think different. Whether it is about uniqueness, you have to be unique yourself. Forget all the rules. Be unique. Be courageous. Okay. And this is very important. Go off the main road. The main road is traversed by everybody. And everybody is not creative and does not attain the kind of success that you want in your life. So, what do you do? Go off-roading. Get out of the beaten path. Don't troll down the beaten path. Find your own path. Go off-road. It has new vistas to offer. A view that you cannot get when you are traveling down the main road. By that new view that you want, that unique view that you want, can only be got when you off-road and move out of the main road. Let's continue with those tips. Let your mind be wild and let it be an explorer. That's what I say when you say go off-road. You be go into the wild and be an explorer. But when it comes to taking action on a solution that you have found or an idea that you find is going to be workable and have started mapping it out, you need to keep a disciplined eye on that course, on that action course. Because then if you start deviating, you are losing focus. So while your mind has to be free, be an explorer and be wild when you are thinking of ideas, once you zero in on an idea, you need to start focusing. You need a disciplined eye on that course, on that action. Any problem that you have, remember one thing, only you have the solution to that. Somebody else can give you advice, can give you suggestions. But whether any of those ideas, suggestions that your friends or team members or relatives or anybody is giving you, whether it works for you or not, only you know. Nobody in the world knows you as well as you know yourself. And therefore, only you can find a solution to the challenges that you encounter. As I've said, don't let the child in you die out. Constantly question things. Search and think of new possibilities all the time. Look at old systems, old processes, and old problems from a new and different perspective. Only then will you be able to make change and do and get results that are different from what you've been getting earlier. And be ready to break the bond. Reject old processes. Don't get tied up, especially emotionally, with old processes. You may have found the old process, but find the new process also yourself. Don't get tied down. Don't get emotionally attached. Be ready to reject old processes and dream of new ideas to better the old. If you're thinking of new ideas which don't improve the old, no good, put it in the fire. Okay, but if you have to work and think of dream of new ideas that will better the old process, service, whatever that you're offering. Continuing with some more tips very important and everything in life is about attitude. I think I have said this before, but it is not your aptitude, but your attitude that will determine your altitude in life. So develop the right attitude. Yes, I'm assuming you have the inherent aptitude 
or you will create one using all these tips that we are talking of. And keep an open mind to changes and whatever new is coming your way. Keep an open mind to the changes and the new. Make it a habit inherently. Embrace fluctuations. Embrace changes. Embrace imbalances. Embrace disruptions that come your way. Why do you embrace them? Not because you want to adapt them, but because they are the sources for awakening, awakening your creativity. When you embrace all this, understand them, as we said in the first screen, first point itself, you have to identify, clarify, and get clarity on all these fluctuations and changes that are coming your way. Question them, understand them properly, and then awaken your creativity, and you are going to find solutions that will surpass even your own imagination. Another tip, let the inner fire and inquisitiveness within you stay burning. Again, it's much like we talked of that let the child in you not die, but let the inner fire and the inquisitiveness within you always stay burning. Be patient. All this takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes iterations. You will fail and go back to the drawing board quite often. So be patient. Be courageous. There is nothing here that can be achieved by being not courageous because you are trying out new ideas. As I said, new ideas means you have to have a lot of patience. You will have to explain those ideas to people multiple times. You will have to give multiple demonstrations of a new idea and a new product that you come up with. So you have it to be courageous. And above all, most important, be persistent. You are never going to find the best solution in one shot. Okay, if it does happen, it's a fluke. Thank God for it and take up the next challenge. Okay, but if it does not happen, don't get dejected. Be persistent, go back to the drawing board and start all over again. So be patient. Be courageous and above all, be persistent. So what are some of the potential benefits of creativity? So the more creative you get, when you start finding out new things and new ideas, you will get plenty of new startup ideas and opportunities. You yourself will conjure them up. It's not that you're going to take them from somewhere. But when you become creative and you start thinking with a creative set of mind, you will get many more ideas for startups and opportunities. Treat those ideas as you would. Start analyzing them. Start finding out solutions to them. Start mapping those solutions. The process is the same, but you will get many more ideas. You will be able to create many innovative products. And because you are unique, because each one is unique, the product you think of it's not going to be something that is going to be thought of by 10 other people. Yes, it will be copied by 10 other people at the end of the day, but that's a fact of life. That's something that you'll have to live with. But you be sure that you work on it and you will come up with innovative product. There'll be so many new ways of selling and marketing that you will think of. And those ideas will help you Get a competitive advantage over the rest of your competition. Okay. So when you come up with such creative ideas, you they are going to be original ideas because they are something that's coming out of your brain, not somebody else's brain. It's going to be your original idea. And if it is unique, once you get an idea and you check around, Google and search maybe, and you find that that's an original and unique idea and that they are not copies or tweaks of an existing service or product. It's of something that is brand new, something that is not existing or something that is a super benefit over the existing one, which makes it truly unique. Then what do you do? 
then you get passionate about that idea and the, whatever you have thought of. Get passionate about it and act on it. Start mapping it, start finding the solution, convince your team that it's the right thing to do and just go for it, just do it. By being creative and having a creative team, you will automatically add value to the product or the service that you are selling. And it will give you a competitive advantage because not everybody thinks of the, that added value. And if you run a business with lots of creativity being a factor, constant factor in your business, your business will keep evolving because your creative team is going to come up with new ideas, new ways to improve your product or your service all the time. So your business will evolve. It will be fun. Creativity can be a lot of fun. And that's why I said, dance away. Dance away as though nobody is watching. And constantly such an atmosphere will constantly feed your creative genius and interest. So it's something that's going to be a long, long term beneficial. So some of the other benefits of being creative are it will lead to human development. Even if you then, when your whole Culture within the organization is that of being creative. Any new person you employ, it's going to rub on to him. And it will lead to human development with all your new inventions. That's how humanity has developed. Whether it's the light bulb or it's the aircraft or it's the telephone, it has developed because people, creative people, thought of things that they would like to do and achieve. And then they started working on it. They found ideas, they found solutions, they mapped the solutions, and then they acted and executed those solutions. And those things become inventions, whether it's a telephone or an airplane or a light bulb or whatever, they become inventions. So these inventions are what develop humanity. And it all comes from thinking out of the box, basically being creative. That's how all these inventions have come about. And although at times this amount of failure, so to say, that one encounters in the process of inventing and being creative, if one out of 10 ideas succeed, trust me, it is well worth the time, the effort and the money that you have invested in it. And these three things is in that order because the time one does not ever come back. So the time that you put in, the effort you have put in, you may not have the capacity or the willpower to put in that kind of effort into projects all the time. And the money. So all of these things that is invested into that one project if one of those creative ideas succeeds, leading to some kind of an investment or a betterment of your product, whether it's your own or somebody else's, but which you then take over, take charge, it is worth that investment that you're making in the project. However, before ending, I need to tell you this. Remember, remember very well that your new, this can be a big deterrent for an innovator and a creator. New ideas will not be accepted easily. Whether it is that the sun is flat or round, okay, whether it is the telephone, whether it is the light bulb, the new ideas were not accepted easily and they will not even now be, okay, because not every human being can easily understand the benefits and the implications of a new idea. That new idea, it will take repeated attempts and endless demonstrations to convince people that that idea is worth it. And to do this, to put in those attempts, to first of all, to work on the idea. 
then to once the idea has been reached to a certain level where you can demonstrate it to people and show it to people, the amount of attempts, repeated attempts you will be making to show it to them and the amount of demonstrations you will give them, whether it's a service or a product, it takes tons of courage and patience. You cannot afford to let yourself get frustrated when you are asked to give a demo to the same set of people the 10th time. Now, do it and be prepared that it might be required for the 11th time. Okay, so it takes lots of courage and patience. And at the end of it, just be prepared for all of this. Even to be creative, just plain creative, be prepared. Because very often you will find, and I have found that in my life with me, that people, when you talk, talk of creative and new ideas, there are times when they will tell you on your face, are you stupid? Yes, seriously. And you'll face that. So be prepared for all of these things. Be prepared for the effort that goes into it. Be prepared for the time you're going to spend into it. Be prepared to take these repeated explanations and demonstrations to people so that you can sell your new idea. All the time, be prepared. Life is not going to be easy when you decide to be creative. But if you are not creative, although the life will be easy, your success is not going to be at any kind of a pinnacle. You're going to be also runners. You're not going to be the runner. So be prepared, remember all these things and become a very creative person. Come up with some great invention. Remember me when you make that invention and let me know. I'll be looking forward to some such new ideas that are going to be implemented. And if to implement such new ideas, you need any help, yours truly is always here. I will help you at no cost. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Start being creative and hope to see something great coming from you in the very near future. Thank you.